And Trustee Radnovich, this is Danielle. I'm not sure if you heard Kiko, but he said that he didn't see your audio connected. Do you just want to do a quick test? We've got you on mute right now. Test. Thank you, trustee. Good evening. This is Mayor Donald T. Lopez, Village of Los Ranchos de Albuquerque. I wanna welcome everyone to the Board of Trustees special meeting slash public hearing, which is being held by Zoom video conferencing. Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. I'm gonna call the meeting to order now. The time is 5 p.m. The Village of Los Ranchos, of course, will be conducting this live meeting via Zoom video conferencing and streaming on its website and Facebook page. Participants can also join telephonically. The instructions and the meeting link were posted on the Village website. At this time, I'm going to call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem, Trustee Sandra Pacheco, Present. Trustee Gilbert Benavides. Pre present. Trustee Alan Lewis. Present. Trustee George Radnovich. Present. Thank you. 
Uh, I'm gonna move to approval of the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. I need a second. Second. I'm gonna call for the question. Call for the roll call vote. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Benavides. Yes. Trustee Lewis. Yes. Trustee Radnovich. Yes. Thank you. Item four is the public comment period. Submitting written comments will be read by the clerk. Participants wishing to speak on topics not on the agenda will be given three minutes. It is advisable to sign up prior to the meeting, obviously. Danielle, will you read the submitted written comments on behalf of the following? Uh, Mayor Trustees, I did not receive written comments or had anyone sign up prior to the meeting to speak on topics not on the agenda. However, I will ask if there is anyone present who did not sign up wishing to speak at this time again on items not on the agenda. If so, please use the raise your hand button. I have a hand raised, stand by. Ms. Faros, you should be able to speak. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, Camille, this is Mayor Lopez. I understand that you are speaking about the item that is on the agenda. Am I right or am I wrong? Yes, but I can also talk about items not on the agenda. Is that correct? Yes, yes you may. Go ahead. You have three minutes. State your name and address. Okay, uh, Camille Varos. 427 El Paraiso, Los Ranchos, New Mexico, 87107. Uh, Mayor Lopez, uh, trustees and administrative um, attendees. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the important uh, agenda items that have been uh, presented through Zoom. And I think this has been unfortunate because there's many um, important items, whether it's zone changing uh, applications for setbacks. Um, and I think it's, um, I think it's important that when there's, um, items that really should have more village input, that there should be other ways to include. Uh, I know I couldn't get out notices fast enough for this special meeting. And a lot of people are having problems accessing Zoom uh, provider for internet or Wi-Fi have been problematic. I know I can't seem to pull up a camera that could show my image. I know um, Ms. Molina asked, you know, if that's possible and I, I still can't seem to, um, to have that problem addressed. Um, therefore, I don't see how we can proceed, especially with this special meeting because a lot of people couldn't get on, um, on the meeting to even know that there was a negotiated agreement or um, subsequent, subsequential agreement that is going to dictate the way the voting is going to be tonight. And, um, I, you know, the way it just seems to, to go is that if there's a unanimous vote amongst uh, the Board of Trustees based on recommendations from uh, the commissioners from the planning and zoning, 
that's the way the votes go. And I think that is problematic because this is about our village, not just a handful of people, whether it's, um, and other government entities have been able to conduct um, items that are very important to the populace of the communities, whether it's Albuquerque, but we're speaking of our own municipality of Los Ranchos. And Thank you, Ms. Barros. Um, the time has expired. We appreciate oh. your comments as always. Thank you. Well, my, my time says 28 seconds. Well, we have a timer, Ms. Barros, but if you feel you have 28 more seconds, I will give it to you. Speak. Okay, so how could we address this moving forward to have uh, more people be able, because whatever the way the votes go tonight is does not, it impacts the entire village, not just a handful of people uh, that paid for legal representation. And that's what I have to say, thank you. Okay, thank you, Camille. We're gonna to move to item five now, which is the consent agenda. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. 5A is the minutes of the January 26th special meeting slash public hearing. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I need a second. Second that. Thank you. I'm going to call for the question, call for the roll call vote. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Benavides. Yes. Trustee Lewis. Yes. Trustee Radnovitz. Yes. Thank you. Item six is the public hearing. A, settlement of an appeal of the Planning and Zoning Commission decision for ZMA 21-03, a request by Casa Rundenia Winery Real Estate Trust, comma, LLC for a zone map amendment to change A1, parentheses, agricultural residential zoning to AC, agricultural commercial zoning as allowed by section 9.2.15E for a property in the A1 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area. The public hearing will also address a request for approval of a revised planning and zoning commission decision in accordance with a settlement agreement between applicant and appellants and will consider the related approvals of a revised site plan, comma, shared parking agreement and a variance from section 9.2.15 parentheses one setbacks period. The property is located at 765 Chavez Road Northwest and is legally known as Lot A Lands of Clifford B. Wood within projected section 29, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, New Mexico Principal Meridian, Village of Los Ranchos de Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, New Mexico, as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on August the 29th, 1984. The property contains 4.2475 acres, more or less. Ordinarily, I would take this opportunity to address, one, the process, two, what constitutes the record, three, disclosure of any ex parte communications, and four, conflicts of interest. However, as previously indicated, I understand the parties to this appeal have resolved their differences. Before I go to the applicant and opponents, I want to point out that it is the obligation of each trustee to declare for the record any instance where a conflict of interest or the appearance of a conflict of interest might exist. Should that be the case, that trustee must then withdraw from further deliberations, including participation in discussions and any decision making. Is there any trustee who will recuse themselves from this item? Let me make a statement. Please. Um, uh, so let me tell you what the potential situation is, and then I'm going to ask 
uh, Nan Winter for her advice on this. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'll be brief. So, uh, I, so I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, I was a Planning and Zoning Commissioner, and uh, we first uh, heard of this uh, application back uh, May 11th. Uh, and uh, and the, the uh, there was a, def uh, a deferral at that point. Um, so I did uh, I did vote on that, uh, uh, and then uh, it came up again on September 14th, and there was a decision made. Uh, then and I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission then as well. So um, I'm not quite sure if it's called a conflict of interest, uh, but it's okay by me if, if it is. Uh, but uh, I, I'm looking at at uh, something called the uh, Code of Judicial Conduct, and I believe what we do is is considered a quasi judicial proceeding, which is covered by this. And even though the what the issue that we hear that's uh, before us today is is different than what what I heard when I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission. It is very much related. Uh, so uh, there, you know, it could be potentially gray, but I do not want to make a mistake on this because I would hate to be the reason that today's BOT decision is ever challenged in the future. So let me ask. Um, Let's see, yeah. So let me ask Nan Winter, uh, what, what would you advise me to, to do here? Mayor, trustee, I think in accordance with uh, Judicial Rule 20-211, um, um, Trustee Benavides has previously sat um, um, on a matter related to this issue. And my counsel to him was that it, it there's at least a perception that his decision-making may not be, you know, um, maybe biased. So I had I have previously counseled him, Mayor and Trustee, that he should likely recuse himself. So please uh, make your decision, Trustee Benavides. I will recuse myself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to turn to the applicants, counsel, counsel for the opponents, and then hear from Director Justice and Attorney Winter, starting with the applicants' counsel. Without getting into details of any tentative agreement, can I ask you to make an appearance for the record and confirm who you represent? Yes, sir. Uh, Angelo Artuso, and behind me is Roger Eaton, if you can see us. Uh, and we represent the applicant, Casa Rondeña Real Estate Trust, LLC. Thank you. I will now refer to the counsel for the appellants. Please make your appearance and tell us who you represent. Uh, Mayor Lopez, honorable trustees, ladies and gentlemen, I'm David Campbell, attorney at law, and I represent the appellants and interveners in this matter. The appellants and interveners I represent are, by name, the following. John M. and Mary Ann Eves, Gerald and Deborah Dixon, Lee and Georgia Smith, Joyce Hamill, Tim and Heather Gallegos, Randy and Linda McKee, Gerald and Nancy Rail, Doug Binder, Kurt and Summer Ferreria, Peter and Judy Weinreb, Dr. Barry Ramo and Roberta Cooper Ramo, Marianne Woodard, Richard and Elizabeth Gonzalez, Adam and Tanya Triolo, Marcia Adams, and William Walker. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Please present the settlement agreement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees. These appellants who I just named filed an appeal of the Planning and Zoning Commission's decision in ZMA 21-03 and opposed the application for a zone change from A1 to AC Agricultural Commercial at the Anamante Winery at 765 Chavez Road. Uh, I am pleased to tell you that the appellants and the applicant have reached a settlement of this appeal, the terms of which are set out in an eight-page document, uh, executed document, which has been submitted to the village of Los Ranchos. Without reading the entire settlement agreement, which is available to you and to the public, let me summarize some important elements of the agreement. Number one. The agreement has contractual requirements between the appellants and the applicant 
but also relies on the village of Los Ranchos adopting AC or agricultural commercial zoning on the Anamante site, along with specified enforceable conditions, a floor plan, site plan, and a shared parking agreement. Number two, there are conditions in the settlement concerning the allowed location and heights of the building or buildings to be constructed on the site, the materials and aesthetics of the structures, and the requirement that the structure or structures conform to an approved site plan and floor plan. Number three, other conditions in the settlement require a minimum of 150 on-site parking spaces to be shared between the Casa Rondena and Anamante properties, a prohibition against parking in the neighborhoods and on public rights of way, and a requirement that signs for no parking be erected. There are certain times and events that will require a parking attendant to be on duty at the site. Number four, there are also conditions in the settlement that place limits on the number and size of events that may be conducted on the Rondena and Anamante properties, along with limitations on the amount of sound or noise that can be generated on the properties. On the Anamante property, for example, any amplified music must take place indoors. The village's laws must be obeyed, including the noise, the noise ordinance and the night skies ordinance. Number five, the agreement cannot be changed for a minimum of five years, and after five years, if changes are requested, notice, consultation, and negotiation with the neighbors is required before any application is made to the village of Los Ranchos. Number six, and finally, the settlement agreement contains important legal elements for enforceability and compliance of the terms of the agreement. Mayor and trustees, that is my summary of the settlement agreement that's been entered into by the appellants and the applicant. The actual text of the agreement is available for the public uh, and for this body. I would be glad to stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Uh, we will get to questions when we get to the item that is under discussion, obviously. So I really appreciate you summarizing. Now I would like to call on Mr. Artuso, counsel for the applicant. Mr. Artuso, please tell us, does the applicant concur in this settlement agreement? And if so, please present your thoughts on that concurrence. Uh, yes, Mayor and trustees, we do concur in the settlement agreement. We've signed it. Uh, it was the subject of extensive negotiations. Um, and uh, I believe that Mr. Campbell has fairly summarized uh, most of the major points that are in the settlement. As he noted, uh, the actual settlement uh, has been provided to the village and is available to the public. Uh, and um, we respectfully request that the village take such actions as necessary to make that settlement come to life and, and uh, finally allow the parties to move on. Thank you, Mr. Artuso. Uh, Mr. Artuso, I also understand there is a shared parking agreement and revised site plan and floor plan. Could you please discuss the shared parking arrangement and the changes that have been made to the site and floor plan since the Planning and Zoning Commission approval, including moving the setback and the redesign of the space? Please yes, also tell us if these changes were agreed upon in the settlement agreement. Yes, sir, I'm happy to do so. The uh, shared parking agreement provides that uh, the applicant which is at 765 Chavez and Casa Rondena Winery, which is on the immediately adjacent property to the east, 733 Chavez, will share parking to allow visitors, contractors, customers, and vendors to one site to park on the other site or the other lot when space is available free of charge. As Mr. Campbell pointed out in the uh, settlement agreement, there will be no fewer than 150 parking spaces between the two properties combined. Uh, the shared parking agreement provides that there is no parking on the public right of way alongside Chavez Road or the Chavez Road Annex, which is a private east, easement on the east side of the Casa Rondena winery property. 
to the extent there is any parking on the private property of either the applicant or Casa Rondania Winery that is adjacent to Chavez Road or the Chavez Road Annex, that parking has to be entirely on the private property of, of those two lots. Um, Mr. Campbell mentioned that uh, the applicant and Casa Rondania Winery would uh, erect and maintain signs instructing visitors, customers, and invitees not to park on the public right-of-way of Chavez Road or the annex, and I'm pleased to report that those signs have now been installed. Um, the signs are installed, obviously, on the private property, not on the public property or the public right-of-way. Yes. Uh, our shared parking agreement provides that if there are going to be ex an excess number of vehicles for the events at either Anamante or Casa Rondania or both, those excess vehicles will have to park at an offsite parking lot not located on any village owned property on Rio Grande Boulevard or on any residential streets. And then finally, the agreement provides that there will be a parking attendant on duty on Saturdays from mid May through mid December, mid September, and for all events of 50 people or more. Uh, with respect to the revised site plan, um, one of the aspects of the settlement is that there is now a 60 foot setback from the Western property line uh, of 765 Chavez Road, uh, with the exception of an administrative and winery office building, which is in the shape of a, a like a two story tower. Uh, that has a 45 foot setback from the Western property line. Uh, my understanding is that under the village ordinance, the 60 foot setback will require the granting of a variance since it exceeds the setback, which is permitted under your ordinances um, by several feet. Uh, the footprint of the building, of course, shifted as a result of the setback agreement between the parties. Uh, the entrance for the building will still face toward the south, toward Chavez Road. The rooms on the east end of the property, if you look at the site plan and the floor plan, have been designed for multi-purpose uses to include winemaking, retail, and event space. Uh, if you look at the site plan, you'll see there's additional room to the north for a future building or buildings, which are also subject uh, of the settlement agreement in terms of the total amount of square footage that, that could be built on the, on the property, not to exceed 18,000 square feet. Uh, any additional building or future building is restricted under the settlement agreement strictly to winemaking activities, equipment, or storage. Uh, the revised site plan has been re reviewed and approved by Ms. Justice, and we would respectfully request that the board adopt a notice of decision incorporating the key terms of the settlement, approve the revised site plan, approve the revised parking agreement, and grant a variance to permit the 60 foot setback from the Western property line. Thank you, Mr. Artuso. I'm Mr. now gonna move, go, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, if I might, um, I'd just like to ask council to uh, additionally talk about the provisions in the shared parking agreement having to do with events. It's paragraph two, I'm sorry, paragraph five uh, and the subparts of that. You did talk about the parking, but the, the um, shared parking agreement also deals with uh, events. Go ahead, Mr. Artuso. Yes, um, in the shared parking agreement, it provides that a um, couple of things. Uh, Basically, the 765 Chavez Road property and the 733 Chavez Road property will um, share the right to hold up to 12 permissive events every month uh, with limited numbers of attendees and staffing in accordance with the village ordinances. Uh, an event that's taking place simultaneously uh, may not exceed the number of attendees permitted by the AC ordinance, which is that the maximum is 150 attendees for each event. And that'll be counted as two events out of the 12 that's being shared between the two properties. Um, additional events may not be, it, the uh, monthly limit doesn't roll over. And so if you don't have your 12 events in a month, uh, you don't get to have, you don't get to add the unused events to the subsequent month. Um, and I believe those are the items related to the events in the shared parking agreement. If Mr. Campbell would like me to address something further, I certainly can. Mr. Campbell, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I think um, that adequately sums up. Again, we are summarizing documents that 
of course, all of the details written uh, in them and that are uh, hopefully going to be adopted by this Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. And thank you, Mr. Artuso. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Director Tiffany Justice, Village of Los Ranchos Planning and Zoning Director. D uh, Director Justice, have you reviewed the shared parking agreement and the site and floor plans? Do you recommend approval? And if so, please explain yourself. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor, Trustees, uh, I've reviewed the shared parking agreement and the revised site and floor plans, and I do recommend approval uh, as the agreement and the plans comply with the village code, uh, with, of course, the exception of the setbacks uh, from the western property line, uh, which exceed the maximum allowed uh, by uh, section 9.2.15i. Um, and so the request for the variance from that section to allow for a building uh, to be set back from the west property line 45 feet and 60 feet um, as agreed upon in the settlement agreement and shown in the revised site plan uh, is requested as well tonight. Thank you. Do you recommend the approval of the setbacks? It seems like you do. Uh, yes, I, I do recommend approval of the setbacks uh, since they're agreed upon in the settlement agreement and they also fulfill the intent of that section uh, 9.2.15i um, to allow for further distance um, of the building from the neighboring homes. Uh, and the greater setback on the west side will be both landscape buffer um, and agricultural land, which meets other requirements of our code. Thank you very much, Director Justice. Attorney Winter, uh, Nan Winter, please present the proposed revised notice of decision. Mayor, trustees, um, earlier this afternoon, Danielle, I believe, circulated a draft uh, notice of decision. Um, you've seen these documents before. They're the result of usually a planning and zoning decision. Um, as a result of the settlement, uh, we redrafted the notice of decision. Um, can can uh, have you have you all received that document? I have seen it. Okay, um, I can share screen if you want me to put it up, um, or I can just discuss it. What's your preference, Mayor? Uh, I would like for you to discuss it, unless one of the trustees wants a more detailed. Uh, and I will invite the trustees to say yes or no. Okay. So I'll discuss it, but I, I am um, um, I can share screen too if you want if you want to go through it line by line. Please discuss. Um, okay, the settlement agreement. The the village is not a party to the settlement agreement, so your your vehicle for facilitating this settlement is the notice of decision. Um, the notice of decision has been rewritten to include elements of the settlement agreement that are within your jurisdiction to enforce. So not everything in the settlement agreement is in a in will be in the revised notice of decision. Only those things that are within your jurisdiction to enforce are contained in the revised notice of decision. Um, the revised notice of decision, of course, makes note of the applicant and the FLE, the opponents and the appellants, and it contains the usual uh, legal descriptions. Um, the conditions that planning and zoning agreed to back in September um, are still included in this notice of decision. Those conditions include EPA and stormwater pollution prevention plans, um, demolition of existing structures, um, future signage must comply with the sign ordinance, exterior lighting must comply with dark skies and construction should meet all village, county, city, state codes. Um, those are still in here. What we have added to it is fairly significant. Uh, what we've added to it deals with everything from the dumpster um, to parking and events. And I'll start with the dumpster first. Um, we have added pursuant to the settlement agreement a, a provision that the dumpster must be on a concrete pad um, at least 200 feet away from the west property line. The previous notice of decision had a different metric on the, on the location of the dumpster, but it was addressed in the previous decision. Um, this agreement, as noted by counsel for the uh, um, applicant and the opponents, um, incorporates elements of a shared parking agreement and, and actually requests and approves or proposes your approval of the shared parking agreement. Under step, separate ordinance authority, you have to approve the shared parking agreement. And so therefore this decision will include, or currently as drafted, includes a recommendation that it be um, approved in its current form. The, um, likewise, 
uh, it is within your purview to approve a site plan, the revised notice of decision, um, would, would approve uh, sheet S1 on the drawing dated January 31 of 2022 in the revised floor plan sheet A1 on the drawing also dated 1 31 2022. Again, um, this is something that could have come back to you at a later time. We are trying to incorporate as many approvals in this process this evening as, as we can. Um, another element of the notice of decision that's different, we have added um, not only approval of the revised site plan, but um, metrics on the building. Um, the revised notice of decision indicates that with the exception of the two-story winery office and admin space, um, uh, these facilities shall be um, offset from the western property line of 765 Chavis by not less than 60 feet. Um, because, as Mr. Artuso noted, this is outside the parameters of 9.2.115 for a setback, um, we are requesting and recommending you grant a variance for this setback. Accordingly, I think Tiffany has indicated that there is sufficient, sufficient justification for the granting of the variance. Uh, it will not cause adverse material impacts on the adjacent neighborhood or the community. Obviously, the community supports the setbacks. And owing to the special conditions, including the pending appeal, a literal enforcement of a smaller setback in this regard would certainly result in undue hardship. So no doubt in, in our mind at this end that there is justification for granting the variance on the, on the wider setback. Um, as Mr. Artuso has explained, um, there are also elements in this draft notice of decision that indicate that there'll be no amplified music played outdoors at 765 Chavis. Um, and that all amplified music and speech shall be strictly indoors. Um, the portal area located on the west side of 765 Chavis shall not be used for events, um, but wine tasting and food service incidental to an event is permitted. Um, another element in the proposed notice of decision is that a parking attendant shall be on duty on Saturdays from mid-May through mid-September for all events of 50 people or more at either property. Uh, Another element in, in, um, drafted into the revised notice of decision um, includes a condition and limitation on the number of permissive events um, on the property. And this is limited to 12 permissive events per month specified in 9.2.115. Um, there are uh, um, additional conditions attached to this particular condition. And that is, is that those 12 permissive events are shared between the two facilities. Um, a second condition on the permissive events is that they cannot be rolled over or accumulated in subsequent months. They are limited um, to 12 per month, and that's it. it. They expire at the end of the month. A third condition relative to the 12 permissive events includes that um, permissive events taking place at both properties um, may have no more attendees than that permitted under the code which is 150 attendees per, um, for each event. Um, and that if that is the case, they will be counted as two events towards the 12. Um, last condition related to the events, um, the 12 permissive events, is that the owners of um, 733 and 765 Chavis shall have a minimum of 150 parking spaces available for visitors. And you heard that from both council. Um, three more conditions and then I'll be done here. We have added to this, again, draft notice of decision that applicant must file a written report um, by the fifth day of each month, specifying the dates, number of attendees, and staff at each event. Uh, this is something that, this is a practice that um, uh, Director Chavez is taking up with more than just um, this particular applicant that uh, she has also requested this information from you, other you businesses. Director Justice, am I correct, uh, Nan? Pardon? Do you mean Director Tiffany Justice? Oh, yeah. Did I call her something you bad? You said Chavez. You said oh, Chavez. I'm, okay. <laughs> I think I was looking at Chavez. Director Justice. Yeah, Director okay. Justice is already requesting these reports from other businesses in the area. So we have memorialized this reporting in the draft notice of decision. Um, Another condition noted in the draft notice of decision is that the number of vehicles um, um, 
if they exceed the permitted number of vehicles on the facility, um, excess parking has to be off site, not on Rio Grande Boulevard and not on any residential street within the village. Um, and they cannot park on the shoulder of Chavez Road either. Um, last condition we included in the um, draft notice of decision is that there will be no commercial overnight lodging on 765 Chavez at all. Um, of course, we supported these draft findings um, and conditions um, with findings um, referencing um, the AC zone code um, and of course the master plan. Um, if you have any questions, I stand for them now. Well, Attorney Winter, before we get to questions from the governing body, we'll need a motion in a second, but I do have a question for you about the motion. Uh, does the motion need to include or can it include uh, a motion to approve the official notice of decision, a notion, a motion to approve the shared parking agreement, and a motion to also approve the granting of the variance? Mayor Trustees, the uh, motion is proper, is probably um, approving the draft notice of decision, which includes a request for approval of a variance, request for approval of the site plan, and request for approval of the shared parking agreement. That answers my question. So at this time, uh, I do need a motion from a member of the governing body. I want to make sure I get this right. So I'm making a motion to approve the draft notification of decision and the different elements included in it. Is that proper or do I need Attorney to spell Winter? them out? Is that okay? I think that covers it. Thank you. I now need a second. Second. Thank you. Now, is there any discussion from the governing body at this time? Go ahead, uh, Trustee Pacheco. Um, Mayor, I just have just a few questions, I guess, or just clarifications. Um, with regard to the number of shared events, which is 12, um, if there are, if there is a, two events that are taking place at each property, there can be up to 300 people. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Attorney Winter, do you have the answer to that question? I would defer to Mr. Campbell and Mr. Artuso, but that's the way I read the settlement agreement. Mr. Campbell first. Sure. Um, uh, yes, and this relates to the AC zone that you have in the ordinance already, and that has a maximum uh, number of events that can be conducted in any month um, by, without looking at the ordinance, it is uh, four events not to exceed 150 persons and eight events not to exceed 50 persons. So those, uh, those limitations are already in the AC zone and are adapted or adopted uh, by, this, uh, by this amount. Um, and uh, I, uh, I, I think the, the agreement, the settlement agreement is clear that those 12 possible events are shared between the two properties and are not allowed to be duplicated on each property. Uh, but to your specific question, should there be two simultaneous events of that magnitude of, of 150, uh, then in fact, uh, there would be a, a very large uh, gathering of 300, but that counts against the, uh, the allowed monthly limits. Uh, over to uh, council uh, for uh, Casa Anamante. Uh, Mr. Artuso, can you comment on that? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor and Trustee Pacheco, that is correct. The, if there were simultaneous events on the two properties that were up to 150 each, uh, that would be 300 people. That, that would be the maximum. I would point out that 
uh, after the Planning and Zoning Commission approved the uh, zone change, the status that we had at that point in time was that there could be 12 events at 733 Chavez and 12 events at 765 Chavez. And what, uh, what the applicant has done has, is, ha is agreed to cut that in half. And so um, the fact that there could be two simultaneous 150 person events uh, is something that we think is, is both reasonable and necessary in order for the properties to be able to successfully use the AC zone uh, and to be uh, to remain viable businesses. Thank you, Mr. Artuso. So Trustee Pacheco. Uh, thank you both for your answers. Uh, the, I guess the other question that comes up then is the parking. So you mentioned that there is going to be shared parking between the two properties of up to 150 spaces, correct? And if I'm looking at uh, Anamante, what I see is 67 spaces on that property. So I'm assuming that what another 83 will be available on the Casa Rondena site, is that right? If, if I might, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the actual language is not less than 150. It's not up to 150, but it's not less than 150 spaces. So that's a floor, not a ceiling. And um, yes, as to the sharing of those parking spaces between the two sites, I think your calculations are correct, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to council to correct me. Actually, do you agree with that? Uh, I actually the uh, number of spaces on the site plan should be 75. That's what was planned. I haven't counted them, but uh, the idea was there would be 75 spaces on Anamante and 75 spaces at Casa Rondena. And yes, Mr. Campbell is correct. The agreement is that there will be not fewer than 150 spaces. And there are um, other areas on the property, you know, access dirt roads and stuff like that that can be used to accommodate parking. Uh, additional parking should that become necessary, you know, within compliance with the ordinances and regulations and making sure we don't block emergency vehicles, that sort of thing. But the, the settlement agreement is no fewer than 150. And my understanding is 765 is designed for 75. And there are 75 at Casa Rondania. Thank you, Mr. Artuso. Trustee Pacheco. Okay. And I apologize. I didn't count each of the parking spaces, but I went off what was listed um, on the site plan um, with regard to the parking. So uh, there very well could be the, the 75 spaces um, listed on there. Uh, let's see. Um, business hours. I, I was a little confused on the business hours of, let's say three things. First, the, um, the winery itself. Um, Secondly, the events, and then thirdly, um, general work, uh, farm equipment, anything that's going to take place at the winery. Can, can you just clarify what the hours of operation are going to look like in those three scenarios? So Mr. Artuso, why don't we start with you? Yes, sir. Uh, events can go up to 11 p.m is my understanding. The winery itself, uh, if, if I could ask the, uh, uh, Mr. Calvin. It's a, the, the, the Cousin Ondania is, is uh, 12 to 7. 7 p.m., so noon to 7 p.m. for the winery itself. And uh, Animante is, uh, I think the ordinance is a little bit different. It goes to, to from 11 to 6. Okay. And we were advised by Ms. Justice early on that it would be easier to just keep that keep that the same. And we're willing to live with it, but at some point we hope that we can make them both the, the same, 12 to 7, but we're willing to live with the ordinance as it is right now. And then just for general work on the vineyards and well, stuff. Well, the general work on the vineyard has to has to be from uh, you know, sometimes we work at night when we're harvesting at night. Sometimes, you know, it's a working vineyard. And so I, I think we could say that, uh, uh, you know, from, from, from sunrise until uh, 11 p.m., just like the events, that we wouldn't be 
working in the vineyard other than those hours. But why would why would there ever be a question about that in an agricultural operation? So does that does that answer your question, Trustee Pacheco? It does. And I know that there was some discussion uh, in the past with regard to just um, and I, I realize we work, we live in a in an agricultural community, and of course there's going to be farm equipment and that kind of thing. But I was just wondering if within this agreement, if it was discussed, um, if there would be certain hours that you know that these type of this type of work could be done. I was just wanting clarification. Right. Mr. Mayor, if I'm if I might go ahead, uh, go ahead, sir. This uh, the the agreement does not. Uh, vary the um, hours that are set out in the agricultural commercial zone for events. Now, I know that Mr. Artuso may have said events can go to 11 o'clock. Um, I don't think that's the number. I think it's actually earlier, um, but I would defer to the language of the agricultural commercial uh, zone that's in the ordinance. I thought it was 10 o'clock. So, Director Justice, can you answer that question? Uh, yes, Mayor Trustees, uh, I'm looking at our code right now on our website um, under the AC zone um, for permissive events. Uh, those events uh, beginning no earlier than 8 a.m. and ending prior to 11 p.m. So, okay. 11 to be or 10, 10 59. Okay, thank you, Director Justice. Any further comment, uh, Mr. Campbell? Um, I have none, thank you. Okay, so Trustee Pacheco, go ahead. Okay, moving on, um, with regard to enforcement, and I know that this was also um, a, a subject of um, confusion. Um, with regard to what's going to happen now, who is going to be enforcing uh, some of the things that we're talking about in the agreement, and noise levels, those kind of thing, and, who do we call if there's general, you know, issues? Is there speeding? I would assume it's it's the sheriff's office, and uh, and I don't know if uh, Fred can address some of those things for us. I don't even know if Fred is on. Fred, are you on? Yes, Mayor, I'm on. Why don't you comment on that? Sure, uh, Mayor, Trustee Pacheco, uh, Trustees, uh, any violation of our ordinance can be enforced by the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the parking per se. Uh, the village is going to also place the, the official no parking signs in, uh, on Chavis Road. Uh, those can then be enforced by the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Uh, if there's noise complaints, uh, same thing, they can report those to the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office uh, uh, at, at any time. Uh, or they can, during the day, uh, they, they can report those to the village of Los Ranchos to the code enforcement. Uh, so there's multiple ways to, to enforce that. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing is, is uh, it'll be a learning process, to be honest with you, with everybody. Uh, but I've already talked to Captain Romero from the Sheriff's Office uh, on parking situations. As long as we post the, the, the legal no parking signs uh, in our right-of-ways, uh, if people violate that, they have the ability to enforce that. Thank you, Fred. Uh, Thank you, Fred. Trustee Pacheco, go ahead. Uh, let's see, and, and just to clarify, so no changes to the agreement can be made until after 2027, is that correct? Mr. Campbell? The, those, the, yeah, that is, those are the terms of the settlement agreement, that's correct. Go ahead. Okay, I think that answers my questions for the moment. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, any other questions from the other members of the governing body? I don't have any. Trustee Radnovich? I do have a question, Mayor. Go ahead. Um, I just, um, it's more of a clarification. I count 68 spaces on the site plan, and I'm just curious where the other seven are. Is, are they along the gravel road leading up to the uh, parking lot from uh, Chavez Road, or are they in that gravel area uh, what appears to be a gravel area in the front where the uh, just to the north of the new fence just asking mr artuso do you know the answer perhaps i do not know the answer at the moment 
Uh, I can see if someone here may uh, may have uh, that answer, but let me uh, let me find out. I know that the intent was to design it with 75 spaces. So give me just a moment, please. Sure. Well, I think I think the uh, Trustee Radnovich, uh, I think the indication of having 75 allows the applicant the opportunity to design the 75. So if there isn't 75 on the plan, they have to be somewhere. They have to be in, they have to be someplace on the property, right? Absolutely, Mayor. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's that. I think is a, is maybe the it's answer. It's just not is. shown on the plan, is why I questioned it. I understand. Any other questions, Trustee Radnovich? One other. Sure. I uh, and and this is actually more in favor of uh, Mr. Campbell's uh, um, appellants, uh, but it appears on the site plan that there's actually 47 uh, feet seven inches of setback on the site plan, not not 45. Uh, so I just wanted to note that. Okay. That's more than 45, right? That is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any more questions, sir? Duly noted. Um, no more questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this point, uh, we have no further discussion from the governing body. I do want to point out on page nine of your packet is a submitted written comment. We will now go to those who signed up with the clerk prior to tonight's meeting wishing to speak. Uh, Danielle, do you wanna take it from here? Thank you, Mayor and Trustees. Yes, we have uh, Ms. Camille Vados who signed up prior to the meeting wishing to speak. Kiko, if you wouldn't mind moving her over, that would be great, thank you. Okay, am I unmuted? This is Camille Vados. I can hear you. Okay. Um, you know, when this application came before planning and zoning. Ms. Vados, if yes. you want to sign, please uh, restating your full name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. And then you have three minutes. Um, Camille. A Vados 427 El Paraiso, Los Ranchos. Um, when the application came before the planning and zoning for a zone change, um, there was 300 plus people who signed up opposing of the A1 to AC. And and then there was a handful of people who then hired a legal team, uh, consultant as David Campbell. And that was never share, shared to most of the 300 people. Now, I don't see that many difference in the settlement agreement, negotiated agreement, that was uh, agreed upon between the appellant attorney and um, Mr. Calvin's attorney. So we didn't know this. And the traffic regardless is still gonna impact our neighborhood. We felt that there was no need for another winery or an event center. Events took place at Calvin's. Um, and if there's no true monitoring of traffic down neighborhoods, because apparently there's not gonna be any uh, allowed parking in front on Chavez, or it says no near uh, neighborhoods. So does that, those are problems that have occurred all along. And when people are wanting to get to an event, they're gonna find the, the first available space. And who is going to truly monitor that? Um, and, whether or not uh, 
the negotiated agreement is really going to be truly followed. Um, when I've approached um, the village for questioning about um, setbacks and and um, blockage of foliage that has caused some hazardous areas. I was told that there's just, they don't have the staff to do that. So once we open up this um, and not even considering what our village truly is about, changing the venue of residential areas to commercial, that's just going to open up changes for our village that for the majority of uh, the residents don't want. We want to keep the village a village. And if we can't think of voices as myself to be heard, to be commented, I could comment from now until whenever, and I have, and where does it go? And the most of the 300 petitioners did not, were not included. And they used us to fight an appeal to begin with. And that's an injustice. And um, it's still gonna create traffic down um, neighborhood, near neighborhoods, whether it's down Guadalupe, down Chavez, which is our historical route. Ms. Barros, can, can you um, finish your thought? Your time um, has gone over by a minute and a half. Well, uh, I'm looking at the blue sky timer and I have a minute and 42 seconds. No, that is the time you've been, oh, you're going, you've gone over. Oh, I've gone over? Yes. Okay, so can any of my questions or comments be no. considered? Of course they can be considered. We are noting and your- Where comments. is it going? Uh, I'm not gonna answer that question, Camille. Your time is up. I appreciate your comments, okay? That's it. So at this time, I am going to ask the question, is there anyone who did not sign up prior to the meeting who also spoke at the September 14th, 2021 meeting wishing to speak at this time? If so, please use your raise your hand button. No hands raised, Kiko? No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'm going to call for the question. I'm going to call for the roll call vote. Trustee Pacheco? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Radnovich? Yes. I'm going to announce the decision. The official notification of decision has been approved by the Board of Trustees with everything that is contained within it. Uh, at this time, I understand that Mr. Randy McKee wishes to speak. Randy, are you still on? Mr. McKee is on. Um, I, would you like me to bring him in? Yes, ask him if he wants to speak. I understand he wanted to speak earlier and we overlooked that aspect of it. Mayor, this will be noted under public comment on items not listed on the agenda as we did overlook him uh, before we went on to the next item. I understand. And that's why I'm asking him to speak at this time if he wishes to. I believe I'm on. Yes. I, do not, I have not requested to speak, but if I do have time, I would like to uh, make a comment. Of course. 
I am an appellant and I will say that this has not been a very pleasurable endeavor for any of us. We know and understand that we ended up in a negotiation. I do hear Camille Vados, his complaint and her issues that are out there. And we did let a handful of people know that we were out uh, negotiating, but I don't think we got back with all of the applicant or all of the signers on the petition that did not want this to happen. And she is correct. There are a lot of people out here that did not want this to happen. We knew and understood that we were going in against strong headwinds with the village planning and zoning already having to prove this. We had no ability to understand whether the board of trustees would stand up behind us in holding this off. So we felt the only way that we could answer this was to actually try to negotiate with uh, the applicant. We don't want this in any form or fashion, but we do understand that if you all were gonna go ahead and go forward with it, we had to negotiate and understand that uh, the outcome could only be a bit advantageous to us in controlling the noise and the, and the, and the traffic pollution and the traffic congestion by negotiating through with this team and, and getting it done. We, we didn't see any way, other way to do it. And we would like to let everyone know that is in, involved in this, that this is not the best outcome for the residents. We would hope that the village would have done a much better job at protecting our zoning. This is residential and Mr. Artuso, Mr. Calvin bought the property and came in and changed it. We had no expectation of that going to agricultural commercial. And now we have an enterprise where as, as uh, Commissioner Pacheco, or Trustee Pacheco looked a little bit concerned and that's that this is gonna be a noisy mess here. We've already recorded um, some of these events at over 75 and 80 decibels. We've turn, turned those in and we just would like everyone to know that this is, this is gonna have to be managed very, very carefully. I am an appellant and I do agree that this, this uh, uh, agreement had to be in place, but it's only because we were not able to get what we needed from the village trustees. And that's very disappointing. I will tell you that. Mr. McKee, um, would you please give us uh, your full address for the I'm record? I'm sorry. Please? George Randall McKee, 749 and 747 Chavis Road, Northwest. Village Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate McKee. That. At this point in time, uh, Mayor, I, go ahead. My apologies. We have another hand raised. Um, I just want to point out again, this was under public comment for items not on the agenda. So um, Kika, would you mind letting this individual in? Go ahead. Stand by. Hello. Yes. yes. Hi. Um, please state your name and your full address for the record, and you'll be commenting under public comment on items not on the agenda. Go ahead, please. Uh, Jennifer Keeper, 722 Mullen Road, Northwest, Los Ranchos. So um, I know this is not on the comment or not um, anything on the agenda. All I want to say is good job to the to the trustees for approving this for Casa Rodenia. Um, I am within walking distance. I think what um, um, uh, Casa Rodenia has had to go through has been absurd. Um, you know, after purchasing the property, I grew up in the North Valley. Um, I've lived next to large properties that have been acquired by uh, developers and individuals that have turned it into subdivisions. So I'm very grateful that that didn't happen with this property and that it's being used for something that's very um, aesthetically pleasing um, and that they're working with their neighbors to do um, what they can um, and going above and beyond what they 
quite frankly, in my opinion, really needed to do um, by, you know, uh, with with limiting their their events and limiting um, all the all the stuff that they're complying with just to make some neighbors happy. So um, good job. I love to see um, business um, being new to Los Ranchos. I'd love to see the entrepreneurial spirit um, and love to see the aesthetic pleasing open space um, and people with the opportunity to utilize that space rather than just small parcels of houses and developments coming in. So good. that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Jennifer. So at this time, I understand that Trustee Benavides may have a comment to make. Is that correct, Trustee Benavides? Yes, if I may, just just three minutes and- Yes, we don't. please. So it, yeah, it was actually very difficult for me to stay quiet given that I was so involved uh, with, with this uh, particular application as a, a PNZ commissioner. Uh, so I, I, I think the outcome was great, uh, uh, but uh, what I do want to say is, is I, I realized this was a difficult process. This was no cakewalk. Uh, this was not decided over a game of golf. This, you know, uh, this, this was a tough one. And because I know how hard it was, I, I have, uh, I have respect for both sides for coming to an agreement and, uh, yeah, not in, uh, I think. Not everybody's going to be happy, but this was a, a pretty darn good compromise uh, that that is uh, livable. So I'm I'm glad that I was part of that process. I want to acknowledge that Dan Gay, even though his approach was wildly different than my approach, uh, 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 he ha he had a contribution in this as well. Uh, there are some lessons to be learned, and uh, I think for we can save that for another day. But uh, things like organization matters and paying attention to our code matters. Uh, staying involved in your community it, it matters. So uh, these are things that we, I hope we can talk about uh, at another time with, uh, with the mayor and the board of trustees. And I, I had mentioned to the, to the board of trustees at an informal discussion that I would like to uh, uh, look at the AC code and revise it. So, uh, so just, just a heads up on that. Thank you very much. Okay. At this time, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. It is 6.08 p.m. I need a second. I second. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for participating. I appreciate it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.